Uplands Airport near Ottawa, Canada, is the home of the principal facilities for aeronautical research in Canada. Located here is the Royal Canadian Air Force Test and Evaluation Center for Military Aircraft. Also the National Aeronautical Establishment, the Aviation Division of the National Research Council. Of particular significance is this spray rig, owned by NRC's Mechanical Engineering Division, which was designed to test helicopter ice protection systems. Through the friendly cooperation of the National Research Council and its mechanical engineering personnel, this spray rig was made available to the Model 107 transport helicopter manufactured by the Boeing Company's Vertol Division located at Morton, Pennsylvania. The 107 type is being produced for several civilian and military operators, among them the Royal Canadian Air Force and Canadian Army the United States Marines, and the Royal Swedish Air Force and Navy. This 107, a Vertol test aircraft, arrived at the spray rig early in December 1962 for a two-month series of tests of its ice protection systems. The culmination of several years of intensive Vertol division research into helicopter icing problems and prevention. Inside the control hut, Mr. Ron Price, engineer in charge of the spray rig for these tests, makes final control adjustments. This unique rig is the only icing research facility which permits the test helicopter to hover free of tethers or tie-downs, a major step toward a realistic environment. The 107 blades are equipped with electrothermal de-icing blankets. The control system permits a specified amount of ice to collect on the blades. Then, just enough heat is applied to break the bond, and the ice is thrown off by centrifugal force. This is far more economical of electricity than the anti-icing principle, in which continuous heat is applied to keep the ice from forming. The rig uses steam as a propellant to force water through rows of nozzles, which are calibrated to produce water droplets about the same size as those found in natural conditions. Before a given test, the liquid water content of the cloud can be varied considerably by adjustments in the size and quality of the water droplets. Two natural conditions, both beyond the control of test personnel, must be present. First, the most obvious, the air temperature must be below the freezing level so that supercool water droplets are produced by the rig. However, the northern latitude of Ottawa generally provides this condition for about five months out of the year. Second, the wind velocity should be over five miles an hour and no higher than 30. Some wind is required to carry the cloud away from the rig so the helicopter can hover safely clear of the 70-foot mast. Yet too high a wind would impose excessive loads on the mast and rig. Wind direction is not important since the rig can be rotated to any heading. The initial 107 tests determined how much ice would collect on the blades based on time, air temperature, and liquid water content of the cloud. This is a typical accretion pattern in the initial tests. A cross-section of the actual blade shows the steel spar which forms the forward third of the cord, the nose balance weight, the box rib, the top and bottom skins, and the trailing edge strip. This section of the fiberglass de-icing blanket shows the stainless steel cap for erosion protection. The blanket has six resistance wires and a common return wire embedded in it and is bonded to the leading edge of the spar. In this illustration, the thickness of the components is exaggerated for better detail and to show the six heating elements plus the return wire indicated at the extreme top. After the pilot turns the system on with a cockpit switch, no heating takes place unless the ice accretion probe in the aft pylon detects the actual presence of ice. Its signal is sent to the cycling controller 
which then energizes the heating elements in the blanket in the order shown. This sequence is simultaneous in each of the forward blades, so that ice will be shed symmetrically. The controller then repeats the cycle for the aft blades. In the de-icing principle, ice is permitted to build up to a depth optimum for removal. Too thin a coat would not have enough mass to fly off cleanly, and too thick a coat might have serious aerodynamic effects. Three sixteenths of an inch proved to be the best layer thickness after which the system cycles. As the blanket temperature quickly rises to the melting point, the ice is thrown off by centrifugal force and the heating cycle stops to permit a new buildup. The flying ice has proved harmless and causes no airframe damage. Here the full installation is shown on a 107 production blade, left unpainted for clarity. The seven wires in the blanket terminate in this female connector near the inboard end of the blade. The male connector, which plugs into it, is attached to the rotor hub. The wires continue down to slip rings at the base of the rotor shaft. In establishing that 3 sixteenths of an inch was the optimum ice thickness for removal, layers of ice were allowed to build up in progressively thicker increments. The 107 then hovered out of the rig with the system turned on to test the removal characteristics. It was found that a very thin layer tended to melt and run back into the unheated portion where it promptly froze. As the thickness of the test layers increased, this tendency became less pronounced until at the optimum thickness, the ice had enough body and weight to fly off cleanly. The next test phase determined the length of the element on time required to bring the interface to the melting point. Once this was established, the blade de-icing system was demonstrated satisfactorily down to minus four degrees Fahrenheit, the lowest free air temperature available. In one of the final tests, the 107 was hovered for about 30 minutes in the spray rig with the de-icing equipment cycling automatically and with the outside air temperature input controlled manually. At the end of the tests, the blades were clear of ice in the protected areas and with a minimum of run back ice in the unprotected areas. In the two months of testing, the 107 made more than 60 flights in the spray rig. Among the concrete results obtained, the development testing of the electrothermal blankets was completed, various automatic cycling and controlled units were evaluated, and anti-icing of the windshields and engine air inlets was tested. These solid accomplishments will contribute greatly to the eventual production ice protection system which in turn will help make all weather flight in the Boeing Vertol 107 helicopter practical in the near future.